<laughs> giving to God. Man, we hear it all the time. But what does giving to God really look like? What does it entail? Is giving to the church the same as giving to God? Once your money hits the plate, is your giving duty done? Does giving only consist of money? If you gave your money straight to someone in need instead of giving it to the church, have you done your Christian duty? Is there anything wrong with giving to the church? Absolutely not. We are free to give as we see fit. But the question is, can we consider giving the church the same thing as giving to God? Jesus said, when we have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Man, giving to God. Join us this and every Sunday as we discuss this topic and many others on Real Talk Radio, where we're always provocative, always biblical, and always real. Let's get it, fellas. Welcome to Real Talk Radio, the show that says just because you don't attend with them does not mean that you're not in him, the him being Jesus. Let's talk about it on Real Talk Radio with Elgin and friends. This show is a continuation of the church folk revolution. Enjoy the show. <laughs> well, T.J. be sounding hard in that piece, don't he? Enjoy. guns all over the room. Just the cats. The people. He goes so thug. Yo, you know what I was just thinking? No. I really feel a stirring in my spirit this morning for a song. I just ask that y'all give me a second to to release what I believe the Lord has placed on my vocal cords this morning. Hmm. Uh, you got a cold? <laughs> I call you holy. That one going to help out? Put your thought on. You put okay. that on your heart. <laughs> but if we're one, one body, if it's on my heart, <laughs> it would be your heart too. Okay, well, go ahead. Start it off. I'll help you out. No, no, no. no, no. I don't believe you. I believe you would allow me to fall flat on my face by myself and then laugh. You can't make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. We just going to let you sing solo. Oh, no. Don't nobody hear you. (laughs) Yo, y'all are killing it already this morning. Good morning, everybody. Bless the Lord, saints and ain'ts. We're so glad that you are in the building with us this morning. You are with Real Talk Radio. We have a phenomenal show this morning. We're going to be talking about a subject that just makes so many people uncomfortable. Uh, We're talking about money. Boy, you cannot talk about money and the church in the same sentence without people just going absolutely bananas. But the topic today specifically is giving to God, question mark. Is that actual possible that I can make a deposit into God's spiritual bank account? All mm. right, well, that a preacher right there. Let me get watch out now. You can't get nothing out of God if you don't put nothing Ooh, in. You don't put nothing in there. You got to put something mm-hmm. in that account to mm. withdraw in order to get what you need. Watch mm. out now. Boy, I'm telling you. See, the Lord said, well, I can go in on that. But it would be so, so wrong. Before you go on, <laughs> should we go pray? On, John, think... why don't you pray us in yeah. on today, on I... this morning, on, where, where do you keep saying on, where did that come from? <laughs> on tonight, <laughs> on this evening, on today. On the Why? Stick with it. On. Go ahead. If it's not on. All right. I will if people stop talking. 
on Real Talk Radio. This morning, a shifting to take place for the anointing to fall upon us. Make it rain up in this joint. We make it rain. Go ahead, please, sir. This dude is tripping. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. First of all, we come to give you thanks. Thanks for being God all by yourself. We thank you for loving us even when we didn't even know what true love was. Lord, we, uh, uh, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us into all truth. And we thank you for this platform that we have to be able to share the truth, to be able to share the gospel, and to be able to just plant seeds and water seeds, oh God, so that your people may be free in you. And Lord, we, as we continue... Uh, on this topic of giving, Lord, we ask, oh God, that people see our hearts and that they hear the words that we're saying and not look at us as we're just so judgmental and we're not wanting to give or whatever it is, Lord. But we know our hearts and we know that you know our hearts. And we just ask that the people uh, have an open mind to receive what the Spirit is saying. And all these things we pray in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. All right. He said matchless, boy. That's what I'm talking mm. about. Because there's real no quick, other name. Quick. Uh, oh, yeah. Real quick, we just wanted to uh, Why do you always just say, say real quick and you be all long? Go ahead, A though. special, uh, uh, just want to just say, uh, send out condolences to Andrea and her family. Uh, she re- yeah. recently lost her uh, dad. And anybody who's lost anybody recently, we just want to just send the condolences. Uh, just praying that God's peace will be there, that uh, he, his comfort will be there with you. We just wanted to acknowledge that. Amen? Mm, amen. Amen. And, amen. And also, y'all, I think... Uh, on the line with us today, we have a special guest. Uh, we have Sister Marie Porter from Illinois Blessing. Are you live with on the air with us, Sister Porter? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm-mm. No? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you, Marie. They're just clowning this morning. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Too early. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Marie. Good morning. Good morning. King. Good morning, King. Good morning, King. <laughs> How are you doing, my sister? Uh... Good. I've been up early. I had to go pick my husband up at six in the morning, but just a little tired. But I'm good. I'm good. I thought you was up wrapping Christmas gifts or something. <laughs> no, I stopped <laughs> doing that a year ago. Oh, okay. Oh, son, I moved out the house. <laughs> <laughs> Got that right. So, do you and your husband like when y'all share Christmas gifts? Do you like okay? You get what you want. I'm gonna get what I want. We'll see us from each other. Y'all do that? Yep. Basically. <laughs> We shop together. Like you want this? I bought him. I bought him a nook color this year, so he's already got his gift two weeks ago. <laughs> he's walking around watching Netflix on. Um, I ain't nook, mad at him. Oh, his nook color saying, "Oh, I can, I can love this thing. I love this thing." <laughs> All right, Merry Christmas. Go ahead, we are, oh, go ahead. All right. Oh, uh, what? What? Go ahead. What? I was just. Thinking, on, I was December twenty third. By the way. Mm hmm. 2012. Yeah. And speaking of December 23rd, what happened on Friday? Uh, what? Uh, what happened on Friday? Nothing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we get it now. Okay. Boy, you <laughs> ain't no... calendar. <laughs> Those jokes that be falling flat, boy, like... <laughs> Oh, they didn't fall flat just went over your head. <laughs> We're still here. Happy end of the day. Mm-hmm. What is the end of the end of the year or end of the My life calendar? Life calendar. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I hope everybody's ready for Christmas. I mean, the Christmas Eve for those that celebrate Christmas, and we know everybody don't celebrate Christmas. Um, but if you choose to, Merry Christmas. If you want to, do what you need to do. All right, John, go ahead and run with this so we can get started and get into the show, bro. Yeah, Jonathan. Okay, today, and and I want to make this known clear from the very beginning of this show. It wouldn't be the beginning because we've already started for a few minutes. Okay, okay, let me talk. talk. (laughs) Into the show. I'm sorry. We are not here to um, tell anybody to stop giving to their church. That is not the purpose of this show today. We are not against giving at all. So nope. if you come in late, please rewind and listen to this. <laughs> rewind and renew think, your mind. I don't think they're going to be able to hear that. <laughs> but, and, and, I, and we will repeat this. <laughs> <after the show. laughs> Hold on. <laughs> you said if they come in late, they won't be able to hear that. That's so right. So we'll say it every few That's seconds. Right. We're going to repeat we like this about this show. So we we're like not... Shows against anybody giving to any church of your choice. That's not our place to tell anybody where to give. The purpose of this show 
is for people to understand what their money is being used for. And if giving to church is the same as giving to God, because many people are under the assumption that once I give my money to the church, then my Christian giving duty is done. We like to give. Mm. (laughs) And that's, that's, that's really, you know, where we at with this. Um, For the Holy Ghost, we like to give. Y'all finish? I just want to say it one time because I don't want nobody to get confused. We like right. to give. We, we like to give. We give. We, we give. give. But we just want people to understand that because you give to your church, either if it's a tithe or if it's an offering, whatever you're doing, if you're giving money, giving to the church is not giving to God. And why? Why, why why isn't it given to God? Because you, you can't really give to God like that. Not nothing material. Okay. Let's, let's, let's talk about it a little bit because this is an interesting <laughs> thought process because I kind of understand where people are going with that thought process. Because when we talked about it off air, I asked the question, do people really think that when they put their little twenty dollars in the plate, that God is somewhere in the room going to snatch it out of the plate and put it in his bank account, <laughs> or is that a a metaphor or analogy they use to say that they're actually giving to their local assembly? No, Do people actually believe again that they are writing a check out when they put first, third, second apostle. Baptist church or the little tithing envelope that God is somewhere going to reach down and take it out of the tithing place. I cannot imagine for the life of me that there are actual people who believe that God is somewhere right now counting stacks of $50 bills that people have given from their tithes and offerings this Sunday. I, people are not really believing that, right? Right. You know, you're right, but I'm going to say they don't believe that. However, when you ask them and you say, well, why are you giving this money to this preacher? Well, no, I'm giving it to God. So I'm not in that mindset. So what is there? What's a good response to that when they say, well, no, I'm giving it to God? Well, what do they mean? Because, you know, like that makes perfect sense. They not. We know that they don't really believe that, that God sitting there and taking money out the offering plate. Yeah, they give this to me. But. What do they really think when they say that? And you question them because they'll say, uh, when you ask them why are you giving this money to this man, to this preacher, you wrote that check out, like you said, to so-and-so and so-and-so. You didn't write that check out to G-O-D or J-E-S-U-S Christ. You wrote it out to this organization or to this person. When they say, why are you giving this money to this man? I'm not. I'm giving it to God. Mm. So what do the question is, what does that mean? I, th- I think I think a lot of times they see that they see the money as a seed. It's not money. It's seed. It's planting. Mm-hmm. And so when they're giving it, they think they're planting the seed into the ground, which is going to bring forth a harvest from God. So that's what's been taught. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's not the money per se. It's they people view the money as a as you know, if you give a hundred dollars, you just planted a hundred seeds, <laughs> or whatever way you want to look mm-hmm. at it. Mm-hmm. And, and another, go ahead. Go ahead, Elsa. No, no, I was just going to say. That I think for a lot of people, and I think we're going to talk about it. It's the way to for them not to have to actually give to people who are in need. Meaning that if I give it to my local church, they have the mindset that it absolves me of any responsibility of giving it to my neighbor who's hungry or to the homeless dude who I know is sitting out on the corner right now with a cup asking for some spare change. I gave it to my church. I don't have to worry about physically being involved with anybody else. It absolves me of any responsibility to have to actually do something. But then when we look at Scripture, it's like Scripture completely conflicts with this mentality that we have of giving it to the local church. And, and again, for all you who might be just tuning in, 
We're not against giving. We love to give, and we do give. And in a few minutes, we're going to highlight a wonderful organization that does the very things that we're talking about. But what we're saying is when people show up and give on Sundays and they put their money in the tithing envelope, they feel like that's all they need to do for their Christian duties Mm -hmm. is to give to this local assembly. Now it's upon their leadership to make sure that they funnel out the money money the right way Mm -hmm. but the the church i'm almost done the church is the only organization particularly within the black community where we give money blindly there's no other organization or place where in the black community we give money blindly everywhere else we want a receipt we want to see a statement we want to know everything down to the very last penny where our money is. We look at our cell phone bills with a microphone, a magnifying glass. We want to, we check our, our check subs to make sure that they made sure they gave us every last minute on it. But the church is the only organization within the black community where we have blind trust when it comes to our dough. Go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah, I was going to say, just just to backtrack a little bit, just to kind of answer John's question, because I'm going to answer from the mindset that I used to have. Not everybody had this mindset, but he asked the question, what people understand that they're not really physically given to God, but they believe that when they give to the church, um, that they are given to God because they are doing, because the church is doing God's work here on the earth, so it's their job to help uh, quote unquote kingdom build, uh, quote unquote feed the poor and clothe the poor through the church. So if I do it through the church, then I'm doing it. And that's a lot of mentality because I feel like if they're doing God's work, then I can also do God's work by supporting them in their doing of God's work. I just, I just want to say this real quick. It's something that you brought up. Um, a word that we always hear talks about, it's called a kingdom building. Why are we trying to build something that God already built? It's established. We can't build the kingdom of God. We're ambassadors to a kingdom that's already built. Sorry. I know know that's off track, but go ahead. Uh, Real quick, uh, then I'm going to let Elton finish. um, Something something else that he said, because I'm going to piggyback off of what he said. He talked about how we give it in church and not give it. It absolves us. And not even just somebody on the street, but... The person sitting right next to you in a pew could be struggling right next to you. That you sit, if y'all got to find seats, you know, this is my bench, this is my row, this is my pew. Um, the person right next to you, to your left or to your right, could be struggling. The, 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 the single mother struggling to pay child care, the dude, by, you know, can't pay his car note. But you feel instead of helping him, I must give my money here. And, and it's, it's a conflict. Like Elder said, with the scripture, when your neighbor, literal neighbor, right next to you on the pew is struggling. You know they hungry. She got four kids, or he got four kids. He is single dad, whatever he is. You know, it's it's like towards the end of the month, the EBT card ain't renewed. You know he's struggling. But yet, you done gave $400 for your monthly tithes up in here, and this dude over here hungry. (laughs) Exactly. And that's the thing. We want people to understand, before people climb upon their high horse and start their little giddy-up talking about how we're against giving, no, we're not against giving, and this show is not focused on the tithe. We are simply talking about making sure people understand how they should be giving and some of the jacked-up, foolish mindsets they have regarding giving. That, that's that's Somebody's simply breathing kind of hard. We're simply trying to understand and give people an understanding of how they should be given and have a conversation. Because, again, talking about money is one of them touchy, taboo joints where people really have an issue with, where you just simply should not be questioning the church about their money. But, again, that goes back to that mindset where we can question everybody and their mama about what they're doing with their money, but the church you are not allowed to do it. That's foolish. What we have to begin to understand and begin to do differently is, because I have an issue with giving, and this my issue is not not giving. I think a lot of times I may be a little too generous, if that's such a thing. 
where I don't question people when they when they come to me and say they have a need financially or in any manner. I don't get. I try my best. Let me say that to not get caught up in the what are they going to do with it. What do they do with the money they had it for? Yeah. And it's really difficult. I try not to. So I make sure that sometimes I just blindly give. And I just give. But I never, and I try to make sure that when I'm giving, I look at the motivation behind my giving. And I think it's the same thing that we have to do when we talk about not giving. Why are you not giving to your neighbor? Uh-huh. What is the That's real a good reason? question. It's the fact that you are looking at them judgmental, that you have uh, presupposed some things about their lifestyle. Am I not going to give it to the homeless dude in the corner because I assume that they have a drug habit, that I assume that they're an alcoholic, that I assume that they mismanage their money? But what the bottom line is, I don't, I don't know any Negro, or in fact, let me put it plainly, I don't know anybody who has not had a financial crisis at some point in their life. It, it, they just happen sometimes. Life happens. Most people that I know are a missed paycheck away from getting something in their life removed, whether it be a car or eviction or lights cut off or bills being cut off. Most people are a, pay, a, a missed paycheck away from being in a financial crisis. And I'm talking mm-hmm. about in my circle. Mm-hmm. They're missed paycheck. But what has happened is we have failed to provide a safe environment for people to get these needs met because we apply judgments, we apply thoughts on them, we pr- apply presuppositions on them saying that, oh, they're just going to do what they did to their money last time. But the truth of the matter is what we don't want to admit, most of us is just selfish as hell. Mm-hmm. That's right. Hey, so Marie, uh, Sister Marie, what do you say to the person who says, once I give my money to the church, it's out of my hands. And whatever that preacher does with it, that's between him and God. What do you say to the person who tells you that? Well, I usually get into an argument. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You are you. No, I usually say, do you, do you really know what happened to the money? Do you really know if that money really was used to help someone or to cover the, just the cost of the building and they kind of like upsets people because it's like how do who are you to judge or who are you to say that the church is not doing right with my money and you know and I try to express to you that you know you don't know where that money's going but yet you see your your pastor getting bigger houses you see your pastor getting nicer things but you see people on the, sitting right on the road with you, you know they hurt. You know they're struggling. They tell you they're struggling. But yet you feel like when you give to the church, it's just like you gave at the office. And so that you, you wash your hands of, you know. Mm. And so my argument is basically, can you tell me what your church does with the money? Can mm. And they can't answer the question because they just don't know. They don't really know. And they and they just say the, the you know of course they say well we got to keep the lights on at church mm-hmm. and I say then I say well how much is your light bill do are you privy to that information mm-hmm. have yeah. you ever even asked how much was is the monthly light bill mm-hmm. they I don't know well we still got to pay the staff I said well do you even have open policy where you can know how much the staff makes do you even mm-hmm. know if the staff get bonuses so I kind of ask questions answer you know continue to ask questions until people realize huh i don't know yeah and <laughs> once really you don't get know. once you get to that point you know i said well you know i i think god would rather for us to be responsible with our giving than just to give blindly mm-hmm. we got a caller too take that joint brother caller from the eight Three two, call from the eight three two. You are live, and we're talking about giving to God. Uh, what's your name and what's your comment? Hi guys, this is Terry. Sorry, I'm a little hoarse today, but let me say this: when I think, I think this is mainly the problem is we don't teach people how to give. First of all, once I release that money out my hand, it's no longer my money. Okay, that's rather if I give it to the person on the street corner or if I'm giving it to the church. Now, God said give cheerfully, but he doesn't 
say specifically that you should be given just to the church. Us, as black people, we, we struggle. Not all black people, because I don't know all black people, okay? I'm going to just say people in general. general. A lot of uh -huh. us, like the gentleman said before, we're living from paycheck to paycheck, okay? There are situations in our own home. So when I'm, you know, we feel like if we're giving our money, oh, Lord, it's like we're giving our life because we work mm -hmm. hard for this money. We want to make sure that people are going to do right. But God <laughs> says, why are you worried about that? Because I said this to somebody else when I was given to somebody that told me that they were hungry. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to give you this money. I, I don't really know what he's probably going to do with it. But when it leaves my hand, it's blessed money. Now, if he chooses to go and get him a hamburger with it, guess what? That's going to be the best tasting hamburger ever. But if he All decides right that he's going to take it and go do drugs with it, God has now brought that curse upon him. Why? Because when it left my hand, it left as blessed money. Okay? So we cannot control what people do once it leaves our hand because it's no longer our money. Talking about the church. When people give their tithes, and it's like the gentleman said before, we, we were programmed that the church is going to do the right thing. I'm going to give my money. Now, I'm going I'm to trust that, 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 that they're going to do the right thing with my giving. But at mm -hmm. that time that you give and you give unselfishly and you're giving, you're planting the seed. That's where that seed stuff comes from because you're planting the seed. Now, if that mm -hmm. pastor decides that he's going to go get him another Bentley, Guess what? It has now turned into blessed money. I don't care if it's my money or the people money next to me. It has now become because what he's doing is he's manipulating the people. He has to deal with God with that. But we don't, we don't, I don't need to know what the light bill is. I don't need to know all of that because I've done my part. And my part was I gave unselfishly. So, again, that's what I'm just thinking, that people, we need to start teaching people the principles of giving. And not all the time that you give, God's going to overflow and he's going to give you a house. And we need to stop telling people that. Because when they give and they ain't seeing nothing in return, they, they're not mad at them. They're mad at God. They say, well, wait a minute, God, I'm giving, 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 giving. God says, you're not giving for the right reasons. That's, not, that's the reason why you're not reaping the benefits of what true giving from. Giving is from your heart. It's not expecting a harvest in return. And if that's all you telling the people, then, oh, okay, I'm going to give my light bill money. God says, okay, your light's going to get turned off because I gave right. you that light bill money. But you took it because the, because he told you to stand in this $75 line and that God was in 10 days, he was going to make your dreams come true. God says, that's not me because all I right. bless the people that's in the, in the congregation that may not have nothing but a dollar to give. All right, all right. All of that is just... Okay. Now, she brought up some really excellent points, but there's a couple of things that she did say that was a bit off, and we're not going to smash her or destroy her or anything along those lines, but we will clear up some things. First thing is, God ain't bringing curses upon people. Okay, let's, let's deal with that. Scripture tells us that Jesus became a curse for us, so that's number one. Now, what I will say this is this. When we give to people, it is not our responsibility to worry about what that money is going to be used for. Because when Jesus tells us to give, he never tells us to say, well, I want you to give, but I need you to consider these things here. And people want to add other things to it and say, well, you've got to use discernment, you've got to use wisdom. But the problem with that is most times your wisdom and discernment is attached to your flesh, which is attached to your selfishness, which is going to create a judgment and a reason why you don't want to give that money. You have to be really careful. So we want to blindly trust the institution with our money, but we don't want to blindly give and follow Jesus the right way. But here's here's my thing about that too. Um, Jesus told us how to give and where to give. Um, and he didn't say just give to an institution. Nowhere in there did he tell us in the, in the New Testament, uh, New Testament giving, New Covenant giving, grace giving, whatever you want to call it. Did you see anywhere in the scriptures where people gave to an institution? Anytime you see money collected in the New Testament, it was for other people. 
Anytime you see it. Yeah, and we got to be careful with that, too, that whole seed mindset. That whole seed mindset, man, and that is just such a most dangerous, one of the most dangerous thought processes that folk have within the body. Because all seed mindset is, is works. All it is, is meaning that I'm going to do something as a way of motivating God to do something in my life. That's manipulation. And I'm going to continue to scream that from the rooftops. When you're in a relationship with your wife or your girl, you ain't manipulating them for love. You ain't manipulating them for blessings. You should be loving simply because of who they are and the fact of that's what God commanded us to do. Mm-hmm. Not loving people with an ulterior motive. Give the and gift. That's what, to give the gift. That is manipulation no matter how you dress it up. That's what seed planting is. I'm planting a seed with the expectation of getting something back. And what happens is if I don't get something back, you know what I do next time? What? I give a bigger seed. Mm-hmm. I make sure that I pray harder over that seed. We got to be really careful with that. Because, again, for all y'all who are just tuning in, we love to give. And we give freely. That's what giving freely is. It's giving without any motivation behind it. I don't, shouldn't have to consider a person's lifestyle. And I know that just wrinkled a hundred different feathers just now. Because somebody is sitting back, well, shouldn't I be worried about what they're going to do with the money? No, you shouldn't be worried about what you're going to do with the money. God is not focusing on that type of stuff. He just wants you to give. If I give with a motive, that controls how I give and God mm-hmm. the spirit. That's and right. It's not in control anymore. That's right. We, I can care about that. And we still have this caller on the line. If y'all want to bring it back on and let her respond, I'm all yeah, for it. But I got a question now. I just uh, want to inject something right quick because, you know, I just want to say something right quick. When you, when you, we, when you give blindly, you miss out on the helping part. To me, I've cried with people that have cried with me when I when they knew they lights was coming back on. It, it, it is a blessing to know that that the money was used for that purpose and to see the full process, not knowing <clears throat> where that money is going to me is irresponsible in the sense of you're not completing the grace that God has given you to be a blessing. Because you're saying you you don't want to know where the money went, but you missing out on the love that you get back when you when you. I, I, okay, I I got I can't talk. Okay, here, here's here's my, here's my question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let, let me let me say this before you say your question though. I we gonna keep it all the way one hundred because that's what we do here. You if you go to a church right now and you had a light bill due, and you had a, something that was going to be disconnected, removed, whatever, you cannot freely go inside your church and say, hey, I need $150 or my life's going to be cut off. And don't simply say, okay, here's a check for $150 and go get your lights cut back on. What they're going to say, because I've done it and I've seen it done, they're going to write a promissory note, they're going to give you some way that you need to give it back, they're going to ask you 50000 Questions about what you're doing with your money. They're going to say, well, you need to go to a money management class. All those things, particularly the money management class, is a good thing. But you cannot give to people with stipulations. That's, mm-hmm. that's just not grace. That's, just, that's not what God has commanded. It, it, it's just wrong. And that's why black people, and I'm going to keep harping on black people because I see it doing it in the community all the time, we would rather go and play the lottery. We would rather lie on our income tax. We would rather lie and claim other people's kids on our income tax so we can get the earned income credit in order for us to make a come up for the rest of the year. We would rather lie and have not pay our child support instead of going to the place which is supposed to be the central place in our community to display grace. We would rather go rob, steal, and kill instead of coming to the local place where grace is supposed to be abound in order mm-hmm. to get a come up. Yeah, That's the church is not a lending crazy. institution. It's not a lending institution. Crazy. Killing me with that. <laughs> mm. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. 
Okay, my question was, where do you draw the line between uh, what you said as far as giving and not really caring where it goes to, um, on the other end, understanding where your money goes? Where is that line drawn? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Give me an example. Huh? I mean, should, should I be concerned about where the money's going? Yeah, you know, versus, versus uh, okay, like give it to a church, that institution, and you don't know where all that money's going. All the money's coming in, you don't know where it's going and what it's going to do. You don't know how much it's going to salaries, how much it's going to building upkeep, how much it's actually going to other people, versus give it to the, uh, the homeless guy on the street not knowing what he's going to do. Because there's two different things that's being said here. One is saying, don't worry about it. The other was saying, oh, worry about it. So where's that line of distinction drawn? Hmm. That's a good question. That's I, think, it. I think the line is drawn when you physically see people getting hurt, getting help, when they're getting assistance. When you can hear stories in your church that, wow, they the church came through for me. Um, my lights are back on, my mortgage was saved, the church. When you hear testimonies like that coming forth from people in the church, um, then you say, okay, the church is doing good things. You know, but to hear, them, to hear those stories sparely and barely, you know, hear that they're really doing anything, I would be kind of concerned. I really would, you know, and that's what spurred me because, I had people coming to me when I was in the church saying, man, you know, my, I need help with my cardinal. I need help. And, and, and I went to the church, and they gave me an application to fill out. Mm -hmm. And on the application, it said, Am I, did I seek public assistance before I came oh. to the church? What? I mean, I experienced this. I've experienced pe people uh, coming to me showing. I've seen the application. Did I seek public assistance? Have I wish my friend would call in. Oh, my God. She's the steward at her church, and she counts money. She uh, actually one of the ones who actually looks, reviews the applications, and she knows all this stuff about how people uh, give, get, quote, unquote, loans to have to pay it back. Uh, can a stranger walk in and request help, or do you have to be a member to request help? I mean, she knows all that. I wish she would call in, but go ahead. I'm sorry to cut you off. No, I was just only making a point that to where does it draw the line to answer the question that are you physically seeing people being helped? Are you physically seeing, um, you know, people ain't crying at the altar for nothing every week. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> something going on in something their personal life. Uh -huh. You know, if you see the same people up front and you see the same people to say, I've been looking for work for two years. The, mm. Something's going on where if you just saying, I released that seed to the church and I just believe that God is doing, the pastor's doing the right thing or the church is doing the right thing, but yet you see members hurting. I, I just can't, I can't sleep at night when I see that. Mm -hmm. And we got to get back to some basics. We're going to take this caller, but we got to get back to the basics too, because I agree with you. This is my thought on it. I want to be able to give you fish. But at the same time, I want to teach you how I caught the fish. So once I teach you how I caught the fish, you can go and teach other people how to fish. So once I give you some money to get you out of your situation, now we can have a discussion about the situation that you was in. Exactly. I'm not getting the situation any longer. And now with this newfound information plus the blessing, you can pass that on. You can give it to other people. Now it's not just... Okay, fill out this application, here's a check, and that revolving door continues. Some education has to be applied because I do agree and think that we all agree there's a lot of people who just don't know how to manage their mon that money because that's not been one of the things that we've been taught in the black community, particularly in the inner city. We all grew up in houses, or I did rather, where my mom and dad started messing up my credit when I was young. Mm. I'm 10, 11 years old, and we get in Jet and Ebony Magazine coming to my house in my name. What, I, I, I ain't apply for this. I didn't sign for this. You can barely had, read it. We didn't all have people who put their kids' name down on, you know, the bills in the house because they found themselves in a financial situation where 
the cable or the lights bill got disconnected, so they underneath their daughter's name. I understand those things. I do. And they're done that. But at some point in time, we have to be able to do more to help people not be in those situations anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's bring out some callers. I mean, Jonathan, you on point with day too, boy. You're coming what the day. I'm telling you. Me? You got what? some calls today? Yeah, we got some calls. We got some calls. You want to bring that young lady back on? Let's bring her on. Okay. I wanted to feel like we just abandoned her. We treated her wrong. Okay. Yeah, you're back. Um, uh, first don't call abandon had, me. Got okay, I, this is what I want to say. <laughs> you guys are so good. <laughs> this is what I want to say to the young, to the to the sister that was on the phone. Um, this is what I want to say. When we go, just think of it like this: when we go and give blood, do we know where that blood is going, or do we know that once we go and give that blood for the specific reason, when we go in to give blood, we know why we're giving it. We don't need to see who we giving it to because we know why we're giving it. We're giving it because hopefully we're going to help save a life that needs to be saved. We don't need to see the manifestation of the blood being given. My fiancé uh, pick up bodies for donors, okay, that people that have donated their bodies. Once they die, they donate it to whoever needs I was scared for a minute. I know what he does. Okay, <laughs> That's just what he does, okay? But here's my point. The, the, it, it, it takes a lot. If your child or your loved one dies and you say, oh, my God, I'm allowed them to take whatever parts they need out of my loved one, that takes a lot for some people. But to be able to give to someone else that can actually save a life, that is, in, in a sense, you feel as though you did your part. It doesn't matter where it goes. It just matters that it is it is actually doing the purpose in which you set out for it to be done. You see what I'm saying? So when we're talking, and see, money is different because, you know, we are, we're, we're particular about our money. And so that's, it, it's called control because we want to control every element of our giving. And that's what we have to stop because once we do that, that is a selfish desire because I want to see, I want to see, God says this is not about you. When you give, it is about God getting the glorification, not for you seeing or even harvest or reaping what is your, your giving. Because your giving may not just be money in return. It may be good health. We don't think about that. We, we want to match nothing. up money for money. But you're in good health. Your kids is in good health. You got a roof over your head. Everything doesn't always equal the same. In other words, if I give $100, yes. it don't mean I'm going to get $100,000 back in return. But it I got good health. I got a job. Back. It, made a, it, it, it doesn't mean home. anything. It may mean not that just I money. Nothing. It may mean that I have poor health. It may mean that more of my finances fall apart. It may mean that I get a divorce. It may mean all these different things. And I think the point that I wanted to make, and I think you got it, was that I don't think that we, we can't be giving with a motivation of expectation. We can't be giving expecting something back. That's not giving freely. That's giving with a price. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Marie, did you want to respond? I just want to know, like, how do you use blood to purchase anything? How do you, how do you, how do you not want to? I'm quite sure the people, if someone received blood from me and they found out that I saved their life, I'm quite sure they would want to meet me. I, you see it all the time on documentaries where they someone donated their kidney or something like that. They they find out who gave them their kidney. They want to meet that person, and we've no, seen stories stories like that all the time. We've seen, Not, I've seen stories where people say, well, "I want to meet the person that saved my life," and you have to, you have to look at the fact that, okay, you're saying, "Don't worry about where the money goes. Don't worry about how the money is being used." But what I'm saying is, there's a cycle that a lot of people miss. They miss the blessing part. They miss seeing how blessed someone is, how grateful someone is, how humble someone is that someone came alongside of them at a time in their life when they thought there was no God, when they thought God didn't care about them. That's the part I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, oh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't give. I'm talking about the part where let's get, see the whole process. Don't just give and then don't know where the process 
what happened to the process. And I think that's what you're confusing my dis my disagreement with is is that 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 sin that wow I could sleep good at night that that family is not going to be evicted tonight. So that single mother was able to feed her kids tonight or get a meal. I mean that it's that's the part everyone misses when you give blindly. You miss seeing the blessing. Mm -hmm. Here here's my thing about about giving the blood, um, about the correlation between the blood. When you give blood, you know exactly what that blood is going to do. You know it's going to help save a life because you know someone is is uh, needing that blood. But when you give money to an institution, you don't know what exactly that money is for because when we were we are told in Scripture, and we see all examples of Scripture, especially the New Covenant, when you see money given, it was given to other people. But when you just give it to an institution or give it to a church, you don't know what that money is being used for. The majority of the money that's given in churches is not given to help people. It's given for salaries. It's given for building upkeep. It's given for uh, to get bigger uh, sanctuaries. To How many building funds have you seen? How is that helping people? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I think we, we got a bunch of other calls. We're going to talk yeah. about that earlier because I have a church budget earlier. thing that I got. Later. Later, later on <laughs> in the second half, we're going to discuss a lot of this, what a lot of the churches use the money for. Uh, but, sister, we thank you for calling. Uh, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Call. you. We got a lot of calls. People lined right. up now. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Appreciate you. Bye-bye. Uh, caller from the 662. 662. 662. You are live. Hey, guys. How you doing? This is Lee from Memphis. Um, hey, Lee, how are you? Brother, how y'all doing? It's been a while. I, I've been staying away from blog talk for a little bit. I've been doing a lot of other things. Um, listen, the 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 gentleman that uh, brought a little bit of correction to a young lady a second ago, I have to agree with him 100%. That was my first reason for calling. It hurts me uh, when I see a Christian, and I like to, and I, no offense to the young lady or anybody else, but I call them more institutionalized Christians because they've taught been taught very well how to speak Christianese. They've been taught very well the big Christian words used by by the big preachers and pastors in church. And that's the kind of thing that turns me off and turns the world off. Um, it's, it, church has almost become a um, an institution kind of like, um, what would you call them, the, um, the, uh, Macyon, the, the, the Masonic Lodge, man, where we have our secret handshakes and our little catchphrases mm -hmm. that, on, that only <laughs> we there. know. Yeah, me too, that only we know. But listen, the man was correct. It said that it saddens me to hear a Christian say that God brings curses on people. When, 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 Christ, when Christ was punished, he took our sins. God's wrath was poured out on Jesus. Yes. He who no sin became sin for us. Jesus Christ became our curse. God does not curse people. That's bad theology. It really is. Jesus is cursed on our behalf. We are not cursed. We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And it's not what we do that makes us righteous, mm -hmm. but it's who we are that makes us righteous. We're not mm -hmm. righteous on our own. If, if, if the thing about giving, money is just a means to material objects. That's all. Material objects are a necessity in our life. But I think today in this nation, we seek too much material objects. I used to be a part of a food ministry. We would want to see your phone bill. We would want to see other bills before yeah. we fed you because some folks want to run that phone bill up to five, six hundred dollars a month and then come asking for food. They would rather talk than than than, than eat. Mm. Mm. So like this, which is true. Now, here's where I see giving in scripture, and I'll and I'll close this out for you guys. In Matthew, we see Jesus saying to those who are on his right, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my Father's rest that was prepared for you. For when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. Didn't he say that? When I was sick, you prayed for me. When you came and visited me, I was in prison, you came and ministered to me. Lord, when did we see you hungry, sick, or in, or in prison? Uh, to whom you've done this, and to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it also to me. I think oh. there's a correlation oh, there. Jesus says to those who inherit the kingdom, you did these things. Jesus never says, blessed are you because you wrote 10% of your paycheck and gave it to your church every week so they could have a bigger parking lot, bigger flat screen TVs in their hallway, <laughs> and the pastor could have a big house and drive a Mercedes Benz. That's not what it's about because I've, I've walked into churches that have 
I mean, multi-million dollar churches, brother. Repeat, you got people, the pastors making a huge salary from the from the so-called tithe. You got people barely barely able to make it and pay your bills. So I'm wondering if that pastor who's living so high on the hog and making so much money is going to hear those words, uh -oh. "Well done, good and faithful servant," because these prosperity preachers that keep keep pressing that message, "Give, give, give." It shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together. If you give, God will bring you a check load of hundred dollar bills. I'm wondering if they'll hear, "Well done, good and faithful." servant because if those pastors and those churches really believe that and, and if that's true why ain't they just rolling out the why ain't they just rolling out the, why isn't the Brinks truck stopping in front of the church on Sunday why isn't the pastor passing out money to his people because he's blessed <laughs> you know what and, and here's the thing too when you hear these these churches keep telling people to just keep giving because your ship don't come in it ain't here you yeah. just hold on hold on it's coming well, they want on. to keep giving they, they want you to hold on to your situation, but they don't want you to hold on to your money. They still want you to give the money while you're holding on, waiting for God mm -hmm. to bless. And there was a list. He, he read a scripture where how would he, the scriptures even say, you know, the scripture he just read about feed the person. This, 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 there's a list of things <laughs> that you see get done. So how are you just giving blindly? Just like the Samaritan, if he would have said, well, I give to my church because my church is going to come along and pick this <laughs> sick person up off the street oh, and wow. then go and um, check, not worry about what happened to the sick person because I gave at the church. No, the Samaritan got the person, told the innkeeper, I will pay. So, you know, whatever his bill is when I come back. So, how is that saying you, we we supposed to just release our money and not worry about where the money went? The Samaritan was bringing some money back, and he knew where the money was going to go. Can I say this before I leave? Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimately, biblically, when it, when it comes down to money and, and the scripture I, I, I just quoted from memory, I, um, let, me, let me say this, guys. What does it ultimately come down to? Is, is it about money, and is Jesus just wanting us to give money, and is God just wanting us to give money? Because, you know, I, I hear the plant a seed here, plant a seed there, plant a seed here, plant a seed there. I never see the word seed in conjunction with money in scripture. If that's nope. what you want to refer to it as, that, that, that's fine. But I will say this. What does it ultimately come down to? What is the thematic view of Scripture from Genesis to Revelation? It's about the rest. Of, it's about the love of God for His people and the restoration of mankind. We've been reconciled not only to God through Christ, but we've been reconciled to one another, and we have a burden. We have a we have a we have a burden that that, that we bear, and that's to bear one another's burdens. We have an yes. obligation to bring about a society that God desires. And what does God desire us to do? Is to love one another as okay. He has loved us. So we love one another not love one another i remember when jesus said in the old testament it was this guys it was love your enemy as yourself but jesus takes it one step further he said he didn't say love your enemy as yourself because some folks can't love themselves and i don't want everybody to love you, you can't love you don't love i don't want you loving me don't treat me the way you would want to be treated because some of y'all don't want to be treated very good by the way you live but jesus said love one another as i have loved you it doesn't this is not about money guys it's about loving our neighbor as Christ loves us, and what does that look like? That don't just sound like a good message on Sunday. That don't just look like writing a ten percent check to your church. That looks like getting down in that looks like that looks, looks like getting down in the dirt with the dirtiest, nastiest bump and giving them a sandwich and telling them about the love of Christ and showing them to them in a tangible way where he cannot just see, you know, just under, you know, hear it, but understand it and get it. God bless y'all, man. Thank you for your time. Ooh, for sure. brother Lee. Oh, All right, man, thank Lee. You. <laughs> Man, hey, that was that was nice. And he, he he quoted one of the things that I love to say. When you have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. And and I, I love that. I love that. We got one more caller before we hit the break. Uh, I think it's Brother Dave. Don't be uh, a Zuma. Don't be making, don't be making so. assumptions. Don't be Is it Dave? Out. Hey, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Doing well, sir. A little hungry, but I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Let me feed you. Hey, John, Jonathan. Uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, enjoying the radio program this morning, and uh, I I so concur with what the last gentleman uh, spoke about. What I The point that I want to bring up, and Jonathan, I think you already hit on it, is we're missing the elephant in the room, the fact that 
if we if we didn't have this institution, we wouldn't have to be having the conversation that we're having right now. Oh. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> because uh, the New Covenant, New Testament Church, I think you touched on this, is that they when they came together, they pooled the resources, which, uh, uh, you know, wasn't their own personal resources, because we know that we can only steward what the Lord gives us out of His right. provision. And that is an abundance in itself. Mm -hmm. But they would come together for the purpose of loving one another and helping each other, you know, uh, in an area where there was lack. And uh, it, so it, it wasn't, uh, you know, given money or new carpet or new pews or to get new choir robes. I mean, it truly was about the, the, the substance of the daily need, the daily provision for that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've gotten so far away from that because we haven't, we have not come away from a conscious awareness it, that's a heart transformation that has to happen. That when we're talking about the church, we're not talking about a building of brick and mortar. We're talking mm -hmm. about a body of people, you know, that are living with the indwelling Lord in them. So that when you do give, you're going to give out of the abundance of the Lord, not out of what you're able to provide. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and that only comes like the 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 lady was talking about, that's going to come out of relationship. That's going to come out yeah. from where you know a brother or sister, and you're in their life, and you're able to, you know, uh, understand well enough to know what their need is. And whether you choose to evangelize them at that time or not, I, I'm not even so sure about that. It's just that they're going to see the love of the life of the Lord that lives and dwells in you. And that on its own is going to have a, a, uh, an effect on them because we're spirits. We're spiritual people, and the Spirit speaks about things that we don't always understand. So that's going to be received, in, in like the other sister said, in the way that you're choosing to uh, express it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm enjoying the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. And here's the thing, though, and which I love, and because I, you know, I'm an analogy type dude. I love metaphors and analogies, and one of the ones that I like to think of is if you knew, if you were somebody who sat in a congregation and you were having a financial need, and you knew that the minute that you left the church, you may have an eviction notice on your door or a disconnection notice, but you knew that the money that you were giving or had gave went to the choir getting new robes, new microphones, uh, fresh cushions on the seats, uh, new speakers, new speakers uh, and all these things that you can still go ahead and do whatever you're trying to do without them, how would you feel? Would you feel the same way if you knew that your husband was in charge of the money in your crib? Y'all put the money in, he paid the bills and all those things, but off to the side, he is going and putting new rims on his car. <laughs> He's putting a new stereo in his car. He's chinning up his car. He's done all these things to his car. He's bought himself all these new toys, drills, and all these things while the bills are piling up, and now you got all these disconnection notices. You would feel some type of way towards your husband. Why mm. is it crazy to, that we should feel some type of way when we're doing the same thing within the local assembly? Again, we're not right. talking about giving. We're simply saying... It's okay to ask the church, Yo, where my money going? Where, where is the money going that I'm giving you here? Where, where is yep, it going? Mm -hmm. Because yep. what I'm seeing is not the fruits of the heart of Christ. What I'm seeing is the fruit of your flesh and the heart of man. We got to, we got to be able to fix that. We should be able to question those things. Mm -hmm. so, Elder, even on that note, how many churches have closed down? How many people have shown up to church only to find a chain on the door? saying it's for sale, foreclosing. When you've been given, you've been a member of this church for the last 25 years, and you've given your tithes and offerings faithfully to this building, and you come up one day and it's a chain on the door? And one of the things is people don't tithe or give money to the church because they don't trust what the dog on church is going to do. If I'm walking and taking the dog, walking to work in the snow and in the rain, and my pastor is driving, and he's making money from what I'm putting in the plate, that's a problem, homie. That's a problem. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. that, that's the issue. The mm -hmm. old folks eating cat food and he eating steak. That's the problem. So what, what, what do you say to the people that says, uh, 
Well, if we don't give, how's the church going to survive? How are we going to keep the lights on? I love that question. I but, love it too. But, answer <laughs> it. Because I asked him. I'm going to answer it a little bit. I'm going to answer it now. Go ahead, Jonathan. <laughs> Who's um, puzzled for that? You know, it's so if that's the case, then the church is only surviving because of money. And when I say church, I mean in the building, the, the brick and mortar institution, because that's what you are referring to when you say that. So how is my local building going to survive without the tithing offering if it dries up? So the only reason it's surviving is because of the tithing money, and it's not because God's spirit is there or God is there in a relationship. So what's really holding that church together? What's keeping it together? Is it money or is it the spirit of God? And the and obvious I, answer is money. Money. And I, I would say simply if the light bill needs to be paid, yo, light bill bill on the 15th, it's 250 It's a bucket in the back. Drop what you got. <laughs> yo, wow. the, the mortgage is due. Yo, that van out there don't drive on oxygen, drives on gas. <laughs> wow. Y'all and another thing, since you said that, <laughs> this van, you got the church van. Now you pay oh, your tires, your car <laughs> break down. You can't Should you drive not be van. able to use the van to go to the grocery store if you need to? <laughs> <laughs> I've been paying my tires. As a matter of fact, I'm one of the... I had ten times. I just had an accident. Somebody, my toy I total. It's not like I can't afford it, but I need to go to the grocery store. Should I not be able to use this van? Should, I mean, that's a serious question. And on that note, we're going to the break. <laughs> just think about it. Oh, we're going to the break. Uh, we're about to play an old. to go by the liquor stores and all that. It's an old song. I don't know about it? this one. So we'll be right back oh. after the break. Oh, 
All right. And we are back. Yeah, that wasn't too bad, man. That was a... a <laughs> that was, uh, I tried to start the show off like at this morning, but I had no yeah. backups. So you know how that works out. Spread love. Spread your life. Ooh. 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 All right. We are back from the break. Uh, we have on the line with us uh, Sister Marie Portis, and she is uh, uh, president, I guess, founder, her and her husband, of Illinois Blessing. Um, and I want to play this clip uh, real quick. Um, play the clip. Play the clip. Huh? Play the clip. Okay, let me play the clip. Uh, and I'm glad I'm the next caller behind uh, Illinois Blessings because I want to let the people know that that is an organization that is truly doing God's work because I am a recipient of their blessing my family at a time when the church would not. Instead of when the church could not, I said when the church would not help me, mm -hmm. Illinois through the blessing and grace God has placed upon that organization, stepped in and helped me and my son. We were in the dark for a whole month during the month of December of last year. Now, you know. That means that we were in the cold, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we were in the cold and the dark, you know, during that. Because of their heart for God's people and because of their diligence, they... That organization stepped in when I didn't have help from nobody else. And they helped me to get wow. my life back on. And I just wanted to, to let whoever is listening and thinking that that organization is not for real, let me tell you, I'm a recipient. And I have been speaking their names to people here in the, I'm in Georgia. They're in Illinois. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that that's what I'm saying. So so I just want to let the people know that that organization was was put in the earth by God. He put it on their hearts. They begin to move on it and and founded this organization that really does help people. And if you're looking for somewhere to send your tithe money, that's the organization to send it to. Not here to just uh, uh, advocate for tithing or anything like that. I just want the people to know that the organization is real and they do what they said they're going to do. Be a blessing. Become a donor. For more information, visit IllinoisBlessing.org. Boy, that was... Woo. That was nice. So, Sister Marie... Uh, you want to talk a little bit more about Illinois Blessing, and then we're going to come to the caller after you finish. Well, like I, like the caller said or the testimony said, what we try to do is um, the people that are in need, they can have a place where they can, they can post a profile anonymously on our website. And what we do, we verify the need in the sense of to make sure that the what they're saying is going go to go, you know, correctly to the places that, that need the money or uh, we, we, we need to know how to send the money direct. Because when we get the money, it goes directly to the need, not to the individual. So the, the people that are giving, they know exactly their money went to go help pay light bill. Their money went to help to pay someone's rent or mortgage payment. And, and, in the midst of the circle of everything, you get a tax write-off at the end of the year for helping someone, and you know where your money went. And our fee is really minimum because, you know, once PayPal takes their amount out and, and we take a small fee for keeping the website active, you, we basically say 90% of your money is going to the person in need. And, and, everybody, and everybody is anonymous. Like, the donor is anonymous. You're not going to be harassed later on down the line to give to this person. And the, and the person in need has a profile name, and they're anonymous. And so then it's just us connecting those two people together. So, Marie, what you're saying, is, I like it, because if a person has, we have what's called PICO here, Pennsylvania Electric, whatever it's called, which is our electric company. So if somebody had a bill overdue from the electric company, and I post, they post their profile, you guys pay directly to the people. 
right? So right. You, we cut, usually you cut the people out of the whole equation, so you don't really have to have that burden of worrying, oh, my God, is my money going to be manipulated and used the wrong way? No, because the good thing about what we do is when that money goes directly to the utility company, we we mm -hmm. email the client, we email the person in need and say, here's your confirmation number to let you know payment was just released. Mm -hmm. And so if they need to check on when it's going to be there or hit, the, hit their account, they have a confirmation number to where that money goes and, you know, how to trace it. And so they know they, they, that we gave it directly to the company. So, I, you know, it, it's a win-win for not only the person that's given, they know exactly where their money is going and they know who they're helping. And the person that we're helping, they know we paid the bill because they get the confirmation number or they get, they get, they can call the, the company and they say, yes, we received payment from a company named Illinois Blessing. And so we. How many people have you guys helped? Right. Um, I don't have the exact number in front of me, for, mm -hmm. but for this year, you know, I can say we help two families. I can say about two to three families per month. Oh my goodness! We we try. You know, some months it's one family because it depends on how how the donations come in and you know how often they come in. But we've had it up to where we've helped up to three to four families per month, and it's slow because like we're new at, and our concept is new. And a lot of people don't know exactly what we're doing. They think that, you know, they think we're, you know, a scam or organization. But once people understand that, oh, my donations are going to help this family or my little $5 combined with other $5 went, went and helped keep this person's lights on. And they can read their profile and read their story about how they got into the situation. So when you go to our website and sign up as a donor, you get the list of um, look. At, you get to look at all the profiles that's on the website so people can right give now. As little as five dollars, and that's as they can give as a little as five dollars. So five dollars. So and we you... also have it set up now where you can set up automated, made it donation. Mm. Where you, oh where you wow! Give don five dollars. It comes out every month, whatever time of the month you want to set it for. It's now set up for monthly donations. So we're our vision now is like we have so many people giving monthly automatically, we can just do so much more. And the people don't have to wait on the website as long. They can get their needs met even quicker. So is it hard to become a donor or like is there a big tedious process into becoming a donor, or even a monthly donor or a one time donor? It's 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 a simple process. You when you go to the website, click the donor side and the website walks you through everything, um, walks you through signing up for a username, password. Once you get that, it, it brings you back to the website, and then it gives you the option of becoming a monthly donor. Or what is the website? Illinois Blessing, with no S on the end, IllinoisBlessing.org. And so I know in the clip, the caller said she was in Georgia. So it doesn't matter where you are? It doesn't matter. We've helped people all the way from Washington, D.C. to Texas. We've helped people all over the country, uh, California. Because once we have the account number, once we have the information, uh, most utility companies are pretty much similar. And so with our bank, you know, when we set up our banking information, our bank has like a really excellent online bank service and they also have a, a good express service so we need to do something where we need to send it overnight they get it like they get it like that day oh and we also want to say callers if you want to call in and you have uh, questions for illinois blessings uh the number is 661-449-9951 and she'll be here for the rest of the show. Is that, that correct? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Y'all have any more questions for Sister Marie? Joe Nathan, you got something? No, uh-uh, I'm good. I'm good. All right. So we're good? All right, 
All right. Yeah, Let's get this other right. caller. Get this caller, bro. Take that call. Take that. Take that. Take that. Caller 661, we appreciate your patience. Thanks for holding. Who do we have on the line, and what is your comment? This is Brother Vincent. How are you guys doing? Bless you, All right, Brother Vincent. Doing all hey, right. Uh, you all have a great show. Uh, I've been listening this morning, and, oh, my goodness, y'all hit on so many points. Uh, and I just wanted to start by saying that the uh, Illinois blessing, that is what Christian giving is all about, you know. Uh, that, that, that's what it's all about. And, uh, but I wanted to uh, start off by saying that uh, I'm, I'm still part of an uh, institutionalized church. A lot of this stuff that I'm starting to learn, I've learned within the past two years, about tithing and everything and stuff like that. And uh, one of the things the pastor tells us is that God cannot give you what's in his hand until you give up what's in your hand. Uh -huh. And actually told us that. And, um, you know, uh, I've heard we, that we also, we, you know, just, just uh, not a couple of weeks ago, uh, the pastor had an anniversary, his pastoral anniversary, and we have these different groups in the church called districts, and it's based on the month that you're born in. And, uh, and each person in those districts are supposed to give $50 for the pastor on his anniversary. Not to mention that uh, every, every month we have to give $100 for the building fund, and if it's five Sundays in that month, we have to give an, an additional $100. Uh, and then they come around and they say, well, we're not asking you to do much. But then they turn around <laughs> and they ask us, they, <laughs> and they tell us we have to, it, it is, it is, a, uh, it is a mandatory that we give $365 every year to the evangelist, they call it the evangelism seed, you know. And now, uh, a couple of years ago, I, I used to work in, in the uh, academy at, the, at this church, and uh, the pastor came up to me. He said, well, Vincent, did you give your $365 to the evangelism seed? And I said, no. And he said, man, I want to fire you. You didn't, you know. <laughs> what? And he just said it out there. He just said it in front of a whole bunch of people. He, 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 he said it, and he said it, you know, just in a bunch of whole bunch of people. And so me, I'm feeling guilty, and I'm like, okay, well, let me just go ahead and, you know, start saving for the $365. But halfway through the year, a need, my own personal need came up. And you know what? I took that money and I applied it to my need because I, I needed that money more than the church did. All right, and, then. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. And, and, and here's the thing, too, uh, and I, I don't mean to, you know, be long or anything like that, but um, my, my wife has a friend, you know, she's a single mother, uh, her son just turned 19 and whatever, and uh, uh, he used to go to the academy, and he got kicked out because they said he was cussing. You know, they kicked him out of the academy. And so she wanted to transfer him to another school, and she went, you know, to get his transcripts. And the assistant, Pat, the assistant uh, principal said, well, we can't give up his transcripts because you still owe us $1,000. So she went to the pastor, and the pastor said, well, you need to go to the principal. She went to the principal. The principal directed her right back to the assistant principal, and the assistant principal said, we can't give these up unless you give $1,000. Now, this lady has had trouble with her transportation. Uh, not too long ago, we had to help her to get money, to uh, help her with some money to keep her lights from getting cut out. And these people are worried about a thousand dollars that she owes to the academy, and her son doesn't even go there anymore. And see, this is the type. This is just an example of the type of stuff that goes on in the institutionalized church. So, brother, brother boy, we about to tee off. Boy, I, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Somebody, somebody, go ahead and do it. Hold now, my mule. I was going to ask, brother, why are you still there? Well, yeah, I'm on my. I'll be honest with you, I'm, I believe these are my last days of being there, really. Uh, I have a lot of, uh, and this is no excuse, but I do have a lot of friendships and everything there, but um, I, I really do believe I'm in my last days of being there. Okay. Okay. We understand. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah, we do. We do. And, and just, just, right. uh, just as a warning, when you leave, it's going to get rough. <laughs> but you know what? You got Christ. <laughs> 
you got Christ on the inside. That's all you need. <laughs> And we right. here. If you want to holler at us, we here. You know. Yeah, you can. You can email us. I mean, you have our email address. Uh, yeah, I, I y'all for the longest. I'm telling okay. you, y'all okay. okay. got a great show. <laughs> okay, well, thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. So if you always want to talk, anyone just email us, man. Hit us up, and we can chat offline or whatever. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Thank you, sir. Let's, let's talk about his story just for a second, please. <laughs> Don, uh, <laughs> great, because you're about to go in, man. And we got I, some information we need to get out. <laughs> Elgin, ready to go ham. <laughs> go ahead, Elgin. We give you two I, minutes. I give you two minutes. Just like at a funeral, you got two minutes to say your piece. <laughs> please keep your comments to two minutes. I just go ahead, say, man. That's all. I, 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 I want us to be able to talk about it, but there was so much in there, it's particularly things that we have seen. I remember one time, man, I was going to church, and right around income tax time, they wanted to do the institute of fast. Talking about, you know, we wanted you to fast and all this to get your mind prepared for giving on your income tax. They wanted people to give 10% off of their income tax. Now, if you know anything pretty much about the black community, a lot of us... Uh, are looking forward to our income tax. That's our come up time. That's when we are actually feel like we're going to beat the ship. You know what I mean? So what happened was you would have people that would get, you know what I mean, three four thousand dollars because they have some kids. So you know they wanted people to give money off of that. But it's the three hundred sixty five dollars. I've seen people hold up money saying, hey, I need everybody who can give $100. They come to the front because you're going to get blessed by the pastor. He's going to lay hands on you uh, because of your willingness to give. But what about those people who are sitting down who are hungry? Just so much, man. I'm, I'm going to be done. Go, go ahead, Jonathan. Go ahead. Go ahead <laughs> it. It, it is a lot. He said a whole lot in there. Um, and it, it goes back to, when you believe that you're giving your money to God, how are you really giving it to God? This you are what you are doing when you give your money to the institution is is helping sustain that system, and that's really what your money's going to to sustain that system and make other men rich because you're not helping the poor. And no matter how long you stay, this brother was he said to himself, he said he had a need, he had a need. But he was saving up money to give to the church. But he had his own need. And then the pastor told me to go fire him. Okay, my two comments is up. Um, John. <laughs> <laughs> John, what's uh, off, bro? I'm just oh, amazed. Uh, nah, y'all go ahead. Like, Marie, you have anything about that? Can we <laughs> go ahead and move on? I think we should move on. But okay. Just, I, I, I hear his heart, man. I just want to read. I just want to read. Okay, Act, I just want to read Acts twenty thirty five. It said, "In everything I showed you, that by working hard in the matter, you must help the weak and remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He said Himself, it is more blessed to give than to receive.'" All right. Well, we can move on. That was right there. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Um, all right there's a go. scripture in the Bible where it says, and they came and gave money, and well, they laid money at the apostles' feet. Now, a lot of preachers will stop there because I was one who used to go and, you know, in the middle of the demand preaching and put money at the altar and lay it at his feet. I did it. That was I did it. So go and lay money at the apostles' feet. But what they don't say is, and the apostles took that money and gave to every man as they had need. So they not, didn't keep the money for themselves. They did not use the money to build or upkeep ministries. No, they took that money and gave it to people who had need. But let me tell yeah. you what happens to me if you put money at my feet while I'm doing something. Whatever <laughs> I'm doing. I'm going to do it just a little bit harder because I want you to get to you put money at my feet. And I'm going to use the analogy that's going to make some people uncomfortable. Strip clubs. Yo, what do women do? Wow. Or not just women, but men. What do they do? They take off the clothes and they dance more seductively. 
they work on their routine in order to get more money. The mm. better their routine, the better their certain skills are, the more money they get. The same with some of these preachers. Some of them come out and sing a song before they preach. They get people's emotions all stirred up. Some of them come out and they know how to say the right word at the right time to get people's emotions stirred up. Next thing you know, folks is running up to the office and dropping money down. And as soon as that first $100 hit the ground, you know what they do? They do the same thing that got the first 100 differently in order to get the second. And it becomes an avalanche. You ain't doing nothing but feeding their flesh. Ain't no yeah. God up in that. That's a hard correlation, man. You talking about the church in the strip club? Yeah. <laughs> Why it, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Even with that, that make you feel guilty. The people who ain't coming up giving money, they make them feel guilty. Like mm -hmm. the brother said, if your hand closed, God can't put nothing in it. Mm -hmm. That's another give to get mentality. The only I, reason I'm open my hand is so I can get something back in it. But let's move on. I, uh, I just had to share this story. I just had to share this story. I was I remember sitting it's in the church. Strip club, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Marie was a stripper. Hit <laughs> <laughs> the pole and everything. Whoa! I had the pole and everything. I signed that for us. And you kept them. Man down, down man down. down. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm putting this on Cordy. I'm joking. All right, David, come on. I was just gonna. I just was reminded that I was in this church service one time, and this pastor was like, uh, he used to do these hour tied sermons, <laughs> like. like before his service, before his sermon, he used to do before these. The sermon? Before the sermon, he did a forty to five to an hour talking about giving, and he was just putting it on, putting it on, putting it on. And I did not have anything to give for this our friend. They people was going up giving money, and my girlfriend next to me was just in tears, and she, so she reached in her pocket and she gave me five dollars. Just go give it. You gotta have some seed to give for this our. And I'm looking at her like. I I don't want to give. <laughs> we sitting there arguing on the pew, and I'm like, I don't have to give. Keep your five dollars. This woman took out an offering envelope, wrote my name on it, oh. and <laughs> walked it up to the front. Wow. She played a seat for you. That is hilarious. And I just, I just, I just <laughs> yeah, and I was just sitting there thinking, that's five dollars. I could put some gas in my car with that five dollars. <laughs> You can put five dollars worth of gas to get somewhere. That's back in the day. Yeah, but I think I think people miss the point of of the. I guess it, it is a form of manipulation where you don't. I want. I guess I just always looked at it like if God gave bless me with some money, then He's blessing me with the ability to know and control where that money goes. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's so true. Different. But in a lot of churches, if you're not giving your tithe, then you cannot be in leadership. You that can't prevents do me from becoming a pastor because X, I, I, I get tithe. Yep, yeah. that's true. He told me that. Shut up. You won't ever be a pastor of a church because you won't tithe. Mm. Mm. And I, mm -hmm. I said, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Elder, you had told a story before we came on the air about your buddy in his hotel. I was down in uh, preaching down in Texas, me and another young cat, we had, uh, in quotation marks, accepted our calling at the same time. So we were two of the young preachers in this little city who would go to different churches and, you know, do revivals, do whatever. You know, it was because we were new on the scene. Well, anyway, uh, his dad was a pastor. So we both went to this one church, you know, how they invite you out to preach to see if they want to select you as their pastor. Well, they actually selected me, but I just turned it down and said I didn't want to do it. Well, he took it. The church folded probably about nine months later. Now, he's and in, in, he's had three different churches, but each one of his churches has been at a hotel. Now, with each new church, it's been a new church name. Okay? But he's going to this church, I mean, these hotels, and renting out the conference rooms for his church service. So everything that's going into the collection plate is essentially 
going to be able to maintain them to continue to have service at the hotel. That just blows my mind. I, I, I just can't can't grasp that. How are you having people put money in the collection plate to pay for the hotel when you can not have church or be meeting at somebody's crib? Mm. Help me understand. I don't understand. But he's done this like three or four times. But the problem is that I have the biggest issue with it. It's the same group of 40 to 50 people that has followed this dude from all of these churches. They were with him at the first one, and they have followed. And you know what they keep saying? We just, we just following the pastor's vision. <laughs> yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. That's true. And, and it's crazy because I was the assistant pastor at a at my church in the hotel. I collected the tithes and offerings. I counted it. I put the stuff in the bank. Um, and I can tell you, I, the majority of that money went to pay for the hotel conference room. It went to pay for that. So none of that was going out to help any needy was going out to uh, buy any coats, buy any, any Christmas program, any time they had something like that. It was still on the people themselves to give, to bring in coats and to bring in school supplies and to bring in hams and turkeys and stuff to give to the needy. The church didn't do it. The people still did it. The but people you know still did it. We're so ignorant, though, John, and this is what we do. Right around this time of year, most churches that got a, a Jesus on the name of it, is doing some type of Christmas gift giving. But the first thing most time that that pastor is going to get up and say is, hey, this is where your time and offerings is going. This is where the money that you've been giving all year to bless somebody. If you ain't giving, you need to give because we're doing something for this community. Now, the problem is you might have been doing something community, for community, but you're doing something one day out of the year. Maybe two. One day. Maybe, maybe two. That's all you're doing. I know it's just right down the street, what, man. What if, go ahead, Edward. No, I was just saying, what about that Christmas photo that go out every year? Doesn't that, if you got, if you got a congregation of five to 10,000 people, that's a lot of money. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. Let's hey, spend, we go. Go ahead. I was going to say, we're going to bring the caller back on the air. Uh, go ahead, Jonathan. Oh, no, I was going to get into this church budget because oh, okay. I, I found some online talking about church budget, and it talks about what churches really spend their money on. And this is not every okay. church. Is Hold not on. Let's, let's, call. let's bring the caller back on, then Okay. that, okay? Okay. Uh, You're back live. Call. You're back hey, you all. Hey, you all. This is Vincent again. Uh, you, you mentioned something a few minutes ago about uh leadership in the church and the only way you can be a leader is your giving and everything. Uh, one of the reasons why I stopped uh, asking people to pray for me to get a job, which I thank God I've gotten a new job, a uh, better paying job a couple of weeks ago. But anyway, one of the reasons why I would stop uh, asking people to pray for me to get a job is because you go in there, you say, okay, I want a job. And the first thing they ask you, have you been giving your tithes and offerings? You know. And they'll say, uh, we can't bless what God has cursed and all that crazy mess mm-hmm. and everything. Mm-hmm. And so I just stopped asking people to <laughs> pray for me to get a job. But if you want to be a leader, like you say, you're called a preacher or anything, the first thing they do, they look at your giving. They look at, did you give to the building fund? Did you give to the evangelism seed? Did you give to this? Did you give to that? If you haven't given to that, you can forget about being a leader, no matter how much of the Bible that you know, no matter how well you can divide the scriptures or anything, that the main, the number one thing they look at is your giving. Mm-hmm. Right, and, and, and not just being a leadership, but to serve on any ministry that they have. If you want to be in yeah. a praise and worship, we had contracts, and and I did it myself. I typed up a few of the contracts that said they had to keep themselves from sexual sins. They had to make sure that they tithed, that they was faithful. They had to make sure that they didn't miss any practice or rehearsals unless it was pre-approved by me. I mean, I wrote these contracts up and made people sign them if they wanted to serve on the praise and worship team of which I was over. Wow. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I did it. And I repent for that. You had to keep yourself from sexual sins. You must be a faithful tither, and you got to come to every meeting. If it's excuse, you got to come to me at least two hours prior to rehearsal. Not just the leadership, but just to serve on the ministry. 
It's crazy. But you all have a good show. You all have a nice show. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get off because I don't want to take up too much of you all's time. You all keep up the good work. God bless you. All right. All right. We're just going to put you back on hold. Man, that hurts my heart, man. Because I know we've talked about it on the show multiple times that we see taking place in most of these churches is practically identical to an old covenant mindset, old covenant model of the way they did things back in the temple. It's just so wrong. All the way down to the workspace righteousness where we continue to teach that you must do in order for God to do. I, I'm just, and I struggle with that. And I see people, I know who I love who blindly just follow everything. And I'm not even going to say what the pastor says because I think that is giving people who think they have a good pastor a get out of jail free card. They blindly follow the church culture mindset. They do have a churchy way of thinking, which we call MCD, but it's just a churchy way of thinking. Everything is revolved around a church cliche, a principle, some type of foolishness. And when you give them scripture, all these things, they struggle and say, well, if we don't have that, how are we going to be able to do this? Since when are we dependent on us to do anything? We can't, how can you depend on us to get it done? That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit, to get things done. Mm -hmm. I, and I struggle with it, man. I, I have a really difficult time with these topics because I see it firsthand from people I love who are constantly just blindly following the church culture. And I don't know what to do with it no more. I, I'm, and Because I want to do something, of course, but I just don't know how to handle it. And that was my whole tangent. Okay. Just to share my frustration. All right. Well, Jonathan, let's go and go into uh, into the study that you uh, researched. Okay. This is a um, this was a survey. Um, uh, it was done back in 2009, but I think it's still relevant. Uh, they surveyed 1,168 churches to ask them about their budget. Um, so the uh, the median or the middle uh, operating budget was two hundred ninety five thousand three hundred dollars, and uh, uh, twenty five percent of the churches' uh, budget is less than two hundred thousand, and fourteen percent of them is over a million. And it's like this, it's it's a lot of money. That is a, a whole lot of money. Um, now these churches, the average average is uh, 580 uh, people in the congregation. And they say about 50% of the churches uh, have less than 200 people in their congregation. But that's still a lot of money coming in um, with that. Uh, and just some of the numbers that we saw was amazing. That uh, most churches, 87% of them, um, get the bulk of their money from tithes and offerings. 87%. Well, 87% of their income is from tithes and offerings. And some have them from investments. Uh, some of them have them for, like, bookstores and the cafeteria, daycare. Um, some of them have rental properties. But the majority, 87% of their income comes from tithes and offerings. And now when we sit down and look at the expenditures, uh, what they're doing with all the money they were getting, this is where it gets – you will be shocked uh, at this number because out of 100%, and again, this is just this is not every church. It's not every church. This is just a survey they did in 1,168, but the numbers still speak. Only 17% of all the money they take in goes out to actually support people. 17%. Hold on. Say that one more time. 17%, 17 goes out okay. for support in a benevolence fund or whatever. 17%. The rest of it, the biggest bulk, uh, 58, no, 76% comes from salaries and wages. Uh, then you got uh, just the building itself. You got the mortgage, rent, or lease. Um, you have, uh, you got the utilities, uh, you know, gas and electric, water, heat, internet, security, whatever. Uh, then you have, like, the maintenance of the building. You got the grounds and uh, plumbing and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have, like, the office supplies. Like, we got a copier, toner, desk, chairs, and all stuff like that. And it, it all added up, like, 76%. So 
out of you get a million dollars, seven hundred sixty thousand of that is going back into the ministry. So how is your giving to that church supporting your fellow believers, your fellow brothers and sisters? Is it really? Now they have some others. I think is maybe seven percent just miscellaneous stuff, um, but still, that's a lot of. Uh, uh, money going back to the building mm -hmm. where so, you got people sit right next to you how many people in these congregations are hurting and suffering but we build the bigger sanctuary so what's the build mindset I mean not to interrupt you but what's the mindset of the pastors or the leaders of these churches when such a big amount of the money that comes in is staying inside the church what's the mindset of them the mindset is we got to keep this running. The only way we can keep this running is to keep, tell people to keep giving. It's, it's not about giving to the people. It's about keeping the church running. And so what happens when you have that type of mindset? What Because, you know, when you have that type of mindset, something is not getting done. Something's not getting done right, I should say. Not only that. Something's but lacking. Yeah, that's right. I was going to say, and I'm going to just go ahead, like, when you have that mindset of, Okay, let's just say 76% of the money that's coming in, staying in, in order for us to keep this thing running. What happens to the gospel? Because the majority of your time is going to be spent on making sure you keep the money coming in instead of preaching the gospel, instead of preaching about uh, Jesus. Yeah, because they got to preach on that. But the people who need to be hearing the gospel, you know what, and I'll take that back because they may still even be in the church right now. I was going to say they're outside of church, but a lot of them still in the church who really need to hear the gospel. They're hearing all the other stuff, but they ain't hearing the gospel. Because you keep coming back to the altar every week to be delivered. Uh, we got another caller. We got another caller. It's like watching a dog on a mount on a dog on wheel running and thinking they can pull somewhere, and all they're doing is staying in the same spot. They have the same type of mindset. You cannot in no shape or form think that you are actually doing something. You have to continually beg for money just to keep your lights, the doors of the church open. You're not helping nobody. Mm. Now, now, there are churches. What do you say to the person who's in the church and say, well, I see where we are in the community and we are helping people. I mean, there are churches out there who do help with soup kitchens and stuff. There are churches out there. But they are very few, very, very few, and far between. And if that's your church, we ain't talking about you. <laughs> I'm serious because people are going to be like, well, my church is my church. And it always, I got the quote, it ain't your church until it's your church. But I would they say your church can be doing more. Mm. If well, you have unnecessary expenses to the church, you can be doing more. If y'all have a van that's only running on Sundays, Mm. And Wednesday night, but you paying the insurance for it all throughout the month, and you're not using no other ways. If your kitchen is only being used, special events for your pastor, you can be doing more. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's foolishness, and you know churches yeah. ain't growing anyway. So I mm. let's get this other caller. Caller from the five hundred one. Five hundred one. What's up? What's up, y'all? What's going on, man? This this this, this where you neighbor? How y'all doing? Oh, oh. <laughs> man, y'all, y'all have been rocking this morning, enjoying, enjoying the show. Um, when, when, when you, when you were reading off the, you know, the facts of the the church budgets and all, um, my, I, I immediately went back. I had the, I, I wouldn't say privilege now, uh, but at the time I thought it was the privilege of being one of the executive board members of of the church that that I left. And um, I could I couldn't help but think when you were when you were reading off all of those those amounts it it is so true that you know we we would sit in these board meetings and fifty eight to sixty four percent of the money that we were bringing in was paying everybody that was sitting on that board wow. nothing going on in the community we we're in the the, the church is in a community now where less than where the church doesn't even have 10% of the people in the community that even attends the church. Nobody from the community is there because there's no outreach. Mm. There's, there's, there's nothing in place 
everything is in reach. And when y'all were talking, I, I, there's, there's, there's a, if I can get symbolic for just a minute, there's a story Jesus talks about in, in, in the New Testament. He's talking, there's a parable he talks about, uh, he gives, gives certain men a certain amount of money called talents. Y'all know the story. Mm -hmm. And, and that last gentleman who goes and buries that talents to me represents the church. Because he wants mm. to keep everything, he wants to keep everything to himself, and the other three represents what true ministry is. They go out and find people to connect with, and and people to work their money with, and they have an increase. And so this one person who keeps everything in the church, Jesus just comes back to him and says, "Hey, you just wicked and profitable. Give me what you have. I'm gonna give it to somebody who knows how to work ministry." And that's what's happening with a lot of these churches, and a lot, that's why a lot of them are folding down and stuff. They're not doing anything with the resources that that God has given unto us, I mean, and you just see it. You see these um, uh, stories, these scandals, uh, Wiley Jacksons. You see all of this stuff that is happening because men do not know how to be good stewards of what God has given to them, and God never gave us a ministry to start. To, to hoard money, and I'm you know it's 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 a shame that that people are crying. You have people I was there with people knocking on the doors with their kids, and they don't have food. And and you know like I was saying earlier, you get going through these questions of of where do you live, where do you work, and all this stuff. Just give the people the money, and meet the needs of the people, and and stop keeping all this money to yourself when you know when you're not even doing anything with it, but build building you a bigger house, getting your kids automobiles. Every every one of the pastor's kids had an automobile furnished by the church. I mean, come on. That's not ministry. It, yeah, it's ministry, but it's M E N ministry. And but man, y'all y'all are on it. I'm just I'm I'm right now I'm just upset because I, 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 I know firsthand, as y'all were saying, I know firsthand where this money is going. Money is not going to ministry. Money is not going to, to 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 help people, and then you have the nerve to to put on the back of a tithing envelope. We want to we want y'all to give a dollar a week to go and support overseas missions. Man, what well, come on? When you raking in almost almost uh, twenty thousand dollars a Sunday. Yeah, we had to cut you down, bro, just for a second because your audio was real bad just now. You sound like it was a uh, cricket phone. Nuts or something just now. I don't know. No offense to Chris. He has candy canes. <laughs> Mouthful of Pringles. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Church, well, I don't know if you want to call, hang up and call right back because the audio was, was kind of bad. Um, uh, but he, he, he said a lot, man. He said a lot. And, 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 <sighs> I'm almost at a loss of words as to you could think back on how much money you've given and I'll say wasted to uh, build man's kingdom to support and that's what you, you know I, I, I don't mind supporting this I don't mind supporting that you know and then that's fine again we are not here to tell anybody to stop giving what they want to give. Because I don't think you not, listen to us anyway. <laughs> you wouldn't <laughs> listen to us anyway. But the fact, point of the matter is, you need to understand what your money is going to. And you need to make an informed decision on if you want to continue to give where it's not going to help people. Because like he said, right, right. Mm -hmm. love one another, support one another. Anytime in the New Testament, we said it earlier in the show, we said it again, when you see people giving money now, we're talking about money, cash money, that dollar-dollar bill, y'all, it always went to help other people. When Paul collected the money, when he told him to put some money aside on the first day of the week, what was it for? It wasn't for him. He right. was sending that money to the believers in Jerusalem. Because they were struggling. Because they were struggling. It always went to help people. Right. But when you give your money to this church, it's going to help that church. There ain't no way around it. You you can't deny it. You can't. And let's look at the results of it. Because within the area that I live in, within this, this inner community, I'd say we probably got about 15 churches. 
15 churches, man, who a lot of them are packed every Sunday, folks, all those, but they're not doing anything for the surrounding community. They're simply receiving this money and keeping it for themselves. If your church is talking about they need to build a new bigger church because they want to attract new members, that's mm. foolish. How about you wait to build a new church until there's no seats, the doggone whole building is overflowing with people, and there's nothing they can do but sit on each other's laps. Then you just might want to consider building another church. No, 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 no. But How about this? Is no. three- I'm sorry. No, if your church is three fourths empty, you don't need a bigger church. You might need to shut your church down and preach the gospel elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I, oh, I, oh, I, I was going to say. Hello. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say when your church gets so full instead of being at the church, how about you send some of these people out? <laughs> You're supposed to be training them up as uh, disciples. How about sending them out? No, we got to keep a man so we can get them. We got to keep a man and get them, keep their money you coming in. Jesus. Oh, we going to do what Jesus said. Oh, oh okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah, no, we don't do that. I think give we got Dave caller. back on the line. Give a caller. Yeah. Dave, bring him on. Dickie Dave. 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 Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm back on. I, I want to, if I can, I want to interject one thing. Um, I think the where we get a little bit confused is that the whole concept of giving is not man's idea. It is God's idea. We're probably all in agreement of that. And... The way I see how God gave is through relationship, because we all know John 3.16, that God so loved the world that what he gave was his son. Mm. Well, I think there's a second part of that scripture that should be applied, and that is that the son so loved the world that he gave his church. Yep. Break that down all right. <laughs> Baby, sir? Yes. Oh, okay. So break that down. What do you mean by he gave his church? Break it down for us. Okay. What the church, as we all agree, it is is the gathering of the saints of the Lord. It is not the brick and mortar. It is not the system of man. It is an idea that a concept that Christ started, you know, uh, for the benefit out of relationship would come the overflow abundance of his life to provide for each other, to love one another, all those things that we're talking about. And we're talking specifically about as it relates to money, but there's so much in the resource of God that is outside of money. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so I, I that was just coming to me as I was listening to the program, is that we're focusing a lot on money and uh you know, yeah, there, there's so much more that comes out of the life of Christ that isn't connected to money. And and that comes out of relationship okay. with uh, knowing a brother or sister and being able to maybe give your time, you know, uh, or, or mm-hmm. give of yourself in another way that doesn't necessarily relate to money. Mm-hmm. And I know money is important just in the fact that we need it to, it makes life easier. Mm-hmm. Right. And I like what you said, give your time, because... Sometimes all people need is just somebody just to listen to them. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, or, or for, I'm going to say for women, um, a shoulder to cry on. Because I don't like, I don't cry on shoulders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just cry on your but, pillow. You know, <laughs> that's right. The tears will burn the pillow. <laughs> all right, move it on. Move it on. <laughs> you fired. <laughs> I think we're going to end the show right there. I think that was good. That was good. Good. Brother Dave, you want to pray us out real quick? Yes, Father God, um, uh, I am so grateful that we have the opportunity to share together in you, Lord, uh, over this medium. Uh, I'm thankful that we're able to celebrate this time of year and focus on what is truly important in our life in the area of giving. Uh, You gave your son to us, and and that means a lot, Lord. Uh, We just want to continue that uh, the people that are listening to the programs and those that will be listening, 
you know, will be supplied by your provision, Lord. And we thank you again. We love you, and we honor you in all that we do. It's in Jesus' name that we ask. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thanks, Brother Dave. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys. Have a Merry Christmas. All right. You too. All right. right. Uh, Closing thoughts. Marie? I just wanted to add, if you really want to help a family, if you really want to help a family this holiday season, we have several families on our website right now that's still waiting for assistance, waiting for donations. Um, some some families need help with immediate utility bills right now, and we're just trying to raise the funds uh, to. So if you have, have have it in your heart to give to help these families, that money is gonna go and help keep someone's lights or water or you know go toward their rent. So um, sign up as a donor on IllinoisBlessing.org if you feel like you really like what we're doing and um, you want to support us. We really appreciate the support. All right. All right. Give us the website one more time, Marie. IllinoisBlessing.org is our website, and there's two channels. There's one side for the donees are the people that need help, and then, of course, donors. There's two ways to go into the website, donees or donors. And to sign up on as a donor, you just click the right-hand side of the website. Mm-hmm. And see, there's also a Facebook page also for Illinois Blessing, right? Oh, yes, right. right. Mm-hmm. You can find us. It should be... There's a link on our website, too, to go at the bottom of our website. You can just click the Facebook link, and it takes you directly to, like, our page. Mm-hmm. All right. Yes, sir. All right, Jonathan. Go ahead and run with it, Jonathan. Oh, man, this is this has been a great show. Uh, I hope that, that, that people have, uh, some of them who listening live or may hear it in the archive that it will help people to understand a little bit better more about where their money is actually going to um, and then you can just make uh, uh, wiser decisions or maybe informed decisions on how much they give to the church now and I'm trying to tell anybody not to give um, cause that's you you got to make your own decisions um, so that's it that's it Appreciate everybody calling in, all the listeners. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thank and you guys for having me on the show. I really appreciate hanging out with you. Uh, you thanks for coming on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, also, uh, don't forget, if you want to stay in contact with us, you can hit us up on email. That's at um, four, the number four, Real Talk Radio at Gmail. And our YouTube page, don't forget to subscribe to that at youtube.com forward slash for Real Talk Radio. And we're also on Facebook, too. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash uh, for Real Talk Radio dot church folk. That's our Facebook page. Elgin? All right, all right, all right. God bless you all. We out. You say we that. out. There ain't no music cue, though. <laughs> Let me play. Hey, hey, I want to play this other song, man. Can I play this song? Go ahead and play it, man. Go ahead and play it. Man, Mr. DJ over here. Y'all tripping, man. I'm going to play this song. Go ahead and play it. Out. This is the out song. I'm singing, Mary. Mary, don't you weep. Mother, don't you mourn. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Mother, don't you mourn. Don't you know? Drown! <laughs> Drown me with that thing. Mary, don't you know? Tell me, don't you know? I want you to know that it is. I could. I believe.